Hello, my name's Ruth Clayton and I am a practising artist and I have a studio at Farfield Mill in Sedburn. Uh, and today I thought it might be a nice idea to do a watercolour workshop with anybody out there who would like to take part. It's um, a fairly simple piece of work and it's just showing you how to create trees in a woodland scene in a fairly simple straightforward way even for the people who are not really familiar uh, with painting or watercolour. Um, I'm hoping that you will um, join me, it's a step-by-step -step demonstration and it does take a little while for us to get through it all but it's you know we're all on this lockdown we're all trying to find things to do so um, hopefully if you're arty and always wanted to have a go at painting, maybe now's the time. OK, I'll keep this brief as far as the materials are concerned, because to me there's nothing worse than these YouTube videos where people are going on and on and you're thinking, just get on with it. Um, OK, so I, I try to do a painting with the three or four colours because it gives a nice coherence. Today I'm going to be using... I'm sorry if the lighting's not great. I, if I put this light on here, we get loads of loads of shadows. I don't know if it's better or worse. Um, ultramarine. I should have shares in that. I use it a lot. Cadmium yellow. Cobalt blue. Actually I wanted cerulean blue but I don't seem to have it here and, and because I'm, it's at my studio and I'm at home then I'll use cobalt today. And light red. Now light red is something that maybe if you've not done a lot of painting you might not have. Um, but once again um, as a um, an alternative, which I don't happen to have, um, you could use burnt sienna um, and that will be fine. So they're going to be the four colours you use. And then brushes, I tend to use synthetic brushes. Um, you know, at the time when I started this, you notice these are student quality, not the artist quality. The artist quality would cost you an awful lot more. These are the artist quality, they're usually smaller, will cost you a lot more. So student quality are fine. I was a student when I started, so I know exactly what these colours do and most of my paintings have been done with student quality. Synthetic brushes, I couldn't afford sable. And to be honest, I do have a sable brush now, but I always go back to these because when they, they ping back to where they should be, a sable brush would stay there. <coughs> and I'm just used to these. So these are called Pro Arty. Um, they're a proline sort of synthetic brush and I tend to use number 12 a number six, a number two or a one, <coughs> excuse me, and a number one rigger. Now a rigger has very long bristles as you can see uh, and we won't be able to do our tree without that, that's quite important. Um, called a rigger I believe because it was invented for marine artists to do rigging on ships so there's just a little bit of added information. And your watercolour paper, I just use cheap and cheerful this is Bockingford and they come in different weights and they're weighed per ream and there's a £90 weight which is probably the, the I don't know the thinnest or the lightest weight and they go up to £400 and this is a £140 weight and then there's a texture so you can get hot press which is smooth you can get rough which is rough and then this strange term which is N-O-T not which is in the middle and if anybody out there knows what that means, then I would love to know. Does it mean just not rough and not smooth? I've no idea. So it's not surfaced, 140 pound weight, Bockingford watercolour paper. But, you know, just use what you've got. Cartridge paper, you'll not get the same sort of effect. Watercolour paper is really what you want. So that's your paper, that's your paints, that's your brushes. And because we're going to be doing um, a tree picture, a woodland you will need a natural sponge it's got to be a natural sponge because it needs all these big gaps um, just your older household sponge won't do uh, and that's what we're going to um, to use so we are going to be having a go at just a woodland picture but I might introduce some greens into there because it's spring whereas this is more autumn this is taken off the internet but it will bear no resemblance to this at the end and if anybody's out there who actually took this photograph I do apologize and I hope you understand that in this these times of crisis, we just have to do what we can. But it won't bear any resemblance to that at the end. But I have done um, pictures of my own. This is one of mine that I did a, a while ago. 
um, just to give you a, an idea of, of how we're going to do the trees. Okay, um, so you you know there's quite a lot of sponging that happens here, and that's why you need an open sponge. Okay, and just jars of water. I usually use a couple, and then you need a nice palette. You need a palette that's got big wells in it, not these little ones. You know, you need we use plenty of colour. I don't use mine delicately. I'm not a delicate watercolourist at all. And maybe some tissues just to wipe your brushes on. And that's it. So I'm going to let you go away and get all your gear and then we'll make a start. Okay, when you're painting, um, what is suggested is to stretch your watercolour paper. I've talked to you about the materials. This is the paper. And this is just a piece of MDF board, which is obviously slightly bigger. It's been used many times, as you can see. To stretch a piece of paper, you might wonder, well, well, what's that about and why am I doing that? It's just to stop your paper from cockling as it dries. You know the sort of thing when your kids bring things home from school and you stick it on the fridge and it's all wavy? This will stop that so that you, when you paint on it, you're painting on a flat surface the whole time and you keep it stretched until you've finished your picture. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So you'll need your paper, your board, and you need the old fashioned parcel tape, not the plastic, not this stuff, but the paper stuff. So you need to tear yourself four pieces, which are the right length. Too long. And too short. Like that. Now the way I wet these, I just turn the tap on and then I just dribble it quite quickly and then use these two fingers like you would a squeegee and then just line them up somewhere. So you do that for each one. Otherwise you can get them too wet. You do all four and you have to do it in this order because once you wet your paper you need to be ready and you need to be quite speedy. You will also need um, a tea towel. Okay. Then if your paper's not too big you can just run it under the tap. If it's much bigger then you would need to put it in the bath. And I just run the paper under the water on both sides. You can just fill the sink and just run it through there or just soak it in there. But I just find this is, this is quite easy just to run it underneath. Now you have to be quick now because the paper is expanding. And it'll be, and as it begins to dry, it'll contract, and but it won't contract flat, and it will all twist. So I tend to, at that point, just get a clean towel of some description, and just take the surplus water out, and then quickly put the tapes on. Now, don't just just touch it. You need a good you know, half an inch or a centimetre, depends if you're working imperial or not, so that you've covered your paper well, okay? Because the paper's very strong, and it could, if you don't cover it enough, it will pull it off. And you do that quite quickly. And if the telephone were to ring now, or somebody were to knock on the door, you'd have to ignore them. Speed is of the essence. Flatten it and just do this again. And then as it begins to contract as it dries, it can't move anywhere because it's taped. So you need to let that dry flat. It's important you do that. If you do that, then any moisture that there is in this paper will collect at the bottom and pull this tape off. So it needs to be dried flat. Um, not in direct sunlight, preferably overnight, but you know until you can tell it's dried. Sometimes you will get like a, I can see a little bubble form in here. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It will dry flat. I promise. Right. Um, this part 
some of you might think, oh, I'm not going to do this. I can't be bothered doing this bit. But I would say, if you can, do. Uh, it's really quite an important part. And that's where you actually mix your colours. So you've been looking at your painting and you think, OK, what do I need? And you actually mix your colours and then you put some sort of little labelling on it. OK, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I've been painting donkey's years and I still do that for every single painting that I do. It's really important because then you know the shades that you've got and you also know the thickness, which is also very important with watercolour. So, looking at those colours um, again, looking at the picture, there's like a yellow, then there's like a honey colour, then there's like this reddy colour, then there is a little bit of lime green, if you look carefully there. I'm going to make more of that. And then you need a very dark colour for your trunks. So, the way you do that is you put a peanut sized blob of each of your colours in the centre of your well. Okay. Like that. Now, out of those four colours, you'd think the one that would be the most dominant and the strongest would be the dark blue, but it's not. It's this light red, and the light red will take over your picture if you let it. If you're using burnt sienna, that won't, okay? That's just a little word of warning there. Right, so looking at the picture, okay, we need this nice yellow colour. So using your number 12 brush, use it like a spoon and put two blobs, oh, not a very clean brush, Put two blobs of water into one of your wells. Take some of your yellow and mix it into there. Okay, scrape it on the side because a lot of your colour sits in there. And then paint yourself a square. I'm just going to repeat this. Like that. Now a little note. Watercolour dries 40% lighter, so you will need to make these colours slightly stronger than what you want, otherwise they'll disappear. So, um, yeah, mix them, you know, reasonably strong, a little bit stronger, and there'll be one that I'll want you to do a lot stronger, which is this dark one at the bottom, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Then you've got this honey colour one here. A couple of blobs of water again. Uh, actually, I've not got enough yellow there, or have I? Let's just put a little bit more in. You can always put more out, but you can't shove it back in the tube, okay? So don't waste it, it's too expensive. And then put your yellow in. And then add a little bit of either your burnt sienna or your light red. Now remember what I said about it being really strong. It doesn't take much to change that. And then paint that underneath. These should be the same, because I did that earlier. A little square like that. That's fine. And then I'm going to scrape that up there. Don't waste any. And then your next one is the light red on its own or the burnt sienna on its own. Two blobs of water. Take some of your light red or your, your burnt sienna. Paint yourself a nice square. I'm doing this standing up so it's not the neatest because I can actually look in the, the camera as well so I know that I'm not doing anything off camera. And then I said about doing a bit more of a lime green. Now if you've got cerulean that'll make an even nicer lime green but cobalt's fine. A couple of blobs of water. Now if you want a yellowy green you put the yellow in first. If you want a bluey green put the blue in first. So I'm going to put some yellow in here. Seem to be running out of yellow. Maybe I didn't put enough in to start with. Mix plenty because when we start sponging, the sponge sucks a lot of it up. So don't, you know, don't skimp on your colours. Then a little bit of the cobalt blue, that's the lightest, or the cerulean, okay? A little bit so that you get a lime green. Like that. Then 
you need, so that's the colour of all your foliage, but then you need the colour for the trunks. And we don't use black. Uh, a purist wouldn't use black anyway, or white. So how do you get that then? Well, if you can just remember a simple rule of thumb, that any combination of a blue and a brown, or a blue and an orangey brown, will give you a neutral, either uh, a grey or a brown. So in our case, we've got the light red or the burnt sienna and this ultramarine blue. If you mixed it with the cobalt blue, you would also get a neutral, but it would be different. But it's the, it's the ultramarine blue I want you to use today. Uh, the best one for a natural black is burnt umber and ultramarine, okay? But this one will give you a bit of a purpley sort of black. So I'm gonna put, you know, two or three blobs of water in there. I'm gonna start with my blue and I'm gonna pretty much put all of that in there. Because this one, I want you to make thicker. And the best way I can say this is the consistency of single cream, okay? Oops, I've just put that onto my tester there. Uh, I'll put it here. And I know that feeling that, that's not thick enough. So I'm actually going to now squeeze, let's say half a peanut directly into there. So that I know that that's going to be a thicker mixture. So that's like a royal blue. Now watch what happens when I put this light red in. I'm going to put a little bit at a time because remember what I said about it being really strong. And it will begin to change to like a purpley black. I don't know whether you can see that. I'll put a tiny bit more in. You don't want it to be brown. You don't want it to be blue. It's got to be somewhere in the middle. And that's definitely thicker. Hopefully you'll be able to see that when I paint it on here. And that's definitely thicker. Okay, so that's fine for the foreground trees, but in the background, you've got some lighter ones. And um, in reality, that's what they call tonal perspective. As things go away from you, they become lighter. Now, you might think, oh, to get that lighter, I need to add white. Well, no, because you'd get this really weird pastel colour happening. Just to make it lighter, add water. So if we just put another couple of blobs of water in here, it doesn't matter if that's clean or not. Take a brush full of that out and add it to there. And then put that at the bottom. I hope you can just see that on camera. And you can see that that's the same shade as that it's considerably lighter. So remember that if you want a lighter shade of something, don't go adding white, you just add water. Okay, and then label them. I've just put CY, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow and light red or burnt sienna, light red, cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. I'll put COB there because cerulean still begins with a C as well. So that, you know, it could be cerulean blue or cobalt blue. So CO. Um, uh, cadmium yellow, light red and ultramarine blue, and then that's just a lighter shade of that, okay? So you need to have plenty of paint. You need to do this, you need to label it, and then I'll come back and we will carry on. Just one little thing, now I've come back to this, now it's dry, just to show you something. Um, sometimes, when we're doing this, if, if, for example, you forgot to put some yellow across here and you thought oh I would have liked some lighter leaves on here then it's all is not lost because what you can do is you can actually lift off some of the dark paint with a tissue and then you can put a little bit of colour in but you can only do that if you're using colours that are non-staining and a way to test that so I always do this as well is with um, a stiff brush get one here it's like a stiff little bristle brush but you can use an ordinary brush will be fine but I'm going to use this just to uh, it'll probably work a little bit better and you wet that so it's damp and then you you scrub a line keep going backwards and forwards and then with a tissue and look at that you can get right back to white so that is a non-staining colour Sometimes when you're mixing a staining colour with a non-staining colour, you don't quite know what it's going to do. So I always do this as well. I always do a line down all my colours 
to see if they're going to lift or not. Now, there might be some paintings where you don't want that to happen um, and you want them all to be staining. But it's so this is a really interesting thing to do. Uh, yeah, that it doesn't go right back to white, not as clear as that one, but you can certainly lift the light red off as well. These should all be non-staining, but we'll see if I'm right. That's a good one. That goes right back to white. And then you might need to do this a few times because this is much thicker, remember. But pretty much you can get that back to white. Now, if you were using something like alizarin crimson, that's a very staining colour and you would get some off, but it would go, the paper would be like a pale pink. You wouldn't get back to white. So we now know that all the colours that we are using are non-staining. So if we needed to lift off anything, we can. OK, so that's just another little thing I'd like you to do just to just to prove to yourself that all your colours are non-staining. Because if you've used alternatives, like you've not got cadmium yellow, you might have used another yellow. Let's just find out whether your colours are staining or non-staining. Right, we're ready. Now, I would normally do this portrait, because the picture is... But the way my camera is set up, it's better if I do it landscape. But, you know, you choose. I'm using round about A3 paper. Um, you know, you can do a smaller one, whatever you like. So we'll just start. So I do a lot of what they call wet in wet. So I'm going to get like a muted, lots of different colours in the background, which are all just going to merge into one. Another. And that'll be the background on which we will then put our sponging and our tree trunks. So we need to get this colour. Rather than just being white, I want there to be other colours there. So you start off by wetting with just clear water, the whole of your paper. Now, if you've got a bigger brush, then use a bigger brush to do this. I will just switch for myself because um, it'll just save time. But you can do it with that. I don't want you to go buying stuff you don't need, but just for speed, I'll use a bigger one. And you can see I'm putting a lot on there because what you want is you want your colours to run. And if you don't wet it enough, common problem, then your colours won't run. They'll just sit there and they might spread a bit, but they won't run into one another, which is what we want. Don't forget your paper is stretched, so it doesn't matter whether it begins to cockle now. It will dry flat again. So I've wet that, and then I just sort of make sure that I've not missed any bits. I can catch it in the light. And also, if there's any bits that are much wetter, you can see there's a puddle here, then I can just take off any puddles at the side or the bottom. And I know that that's nice and wet now. Then I'll go back to my number 12 again now, okay? And um, using the colours that we've already got, you can't really see any sky through that. So we will just put lots of lovely yellowy colours. You know, put your green on. And all your colours, and then in a minute, we're going to tip it up. It doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of white, actually, that's fine. And there's quite a lot of red at the bottom. You might need to make some more colour after this if you've not made enough. So don't go bonkers with this bit. And then you pick it up. And you can see that the colours will start to run. And if you get little weird things like that happening, it might just be that that's some grease off your fingerprints, you know, your fingers or something like that. And you can just add, just swash a bit more water on if necessary. You're only wanting like a little bit of a background. Yeah, there must 
be a bit of grease on that paper, but that's fine. And then just take it off the edge. Like that. So that's going to dry quite light because obviously if it's going to dry 40% lighter anyway, the fact that you're putting it onto wet paper is going to dilute it even more. So it is going to be very, very pale. Okay. Um, and I'm fairly happy with that. So then that would need to dry completely. So I'm going to go and dry that with my hair dryer. I'm going to let it dry naturally a little bit until it loses its shine. And then I will dry it with a hair dryer. If you do it when it's too wet, you'll just blow it about, uh, which is not ideal. Okay. Okay, so that's nice and flat again. So it dried flat beautifully and it's a lot lighter. And then I've got my sponge out now and I've soaked it and then squ squeezed it out so it's it's damp. And you're better testing because you don't know whether you want to sort of do that side or that side. And you need to test, um, let's just test a little bit and see, or you might use both. Let's just, so you can test it on your paper. And it's important that you don't just, otherwise you'll get the same pattern. So you do need to twist, okay. Uh, I've mixed up some more colours as well because I did run out um, with doing that twice. Um, that's not a bad side, let's just try the other side. Now this side, that sort of gives you a different that's okay as well. So I don't mind either. Uh, and then you move on to your picture. And if you look at your picture, you want to concentrate the more the yellow, the lighter colours sort of in the middle. And you know, but it, it's not really vital. And you just make a start. I'm going to use both sides. Leave some, you definitely need gaps. You don't want to put it all over. You'll see why, you know, you've got to leave some gaps in there. You'll see why, because you put your trunks in the spaces. So if you don't have any spaces, then you know where to put your trunks. And I think that will do for now. We can always add more later. Okay. Now I've dried that off. As I say, we can do more sponging later, but this just gives you a good start. Now I've had to sit down, so I really hope I don't get my head in the way or anything like that. Now there's nothing stopping you using a pencil to do the next bit, but usually I just go straight in with a brush. But I will just show you what I mean. So you now need to start now drawing in the trunks, but in spaces. So say we had this big one here. Well, let's start with that one. Okay. Um, it's round about the center, isn't it here? So I'll start there and I will do this in pencil and draw one side and then you get to some, you get to some sponging. So you leave that and then it reappears somewhere up here. And then there's another one here little bits of little gaps where it meets the sponging and then it reappears up here. So there's quite a lot of foliage across there in comparison to this. So it's not going to bear any resemblance. But if you think, well, actually I've got too much there, then there's nothing stopping you. You know, you can paint over part of it. You know, you can choose. Um, and then your little branch is the same. The branches can come off and meets a bit of... Um, a sponging then leave a gap and then it sort of reappears in the spaces and so on and I'll put some I'll put another one in here I think 
So there's, so it's attached to there and it's appearing in that little space, it's appearing in that little space. Okay. one so you need it to have the fattest trunk. Trees always go from thick to thin and maybe I will have um, a branch coming off here. And it might reappear up here. Okay. So you can see I've made a start so I'll show you just with very pale paint. I'm not even looking at the picture now. I'm just thinking about, you know, like lots of little trees in the background. So say there was one here, then you would paint. And then there's all this green, you paint the trunk and there's all that green. So then, but there's a bit of a gap there. Don't forget it goes from thick to thin. So you can go over some of the bits of sponging if you want. You, you've got the choice. So I hope you sort of get the idea. And then with your rigger, uh, where's my rigger gone? That we talked about earlier, just to show you on here. You know, say you've got your trunk going from thick to thin, then this will do beautifully fine lines. Okay, so wherever it meets the trunk it would be a little bit thicker where it meets it so thicken that up and then you've got bits of branches now I do what I call a soft zigzag I'll do it in a darker color so you can see it so that's joined the main trunk and I do a soft zigzag because then you've got little junctions where you can take off more branches. Soft zigzag and you can just keep going forever. Okay, I always paint away from myself because you want, you want the thinnest bit at the top. So obviously if you put your brush down, that's gonna be the thickest bit and then as you move away, that will be the thinnest bit. So that's the thickest, that's the thinnest. If you can't do that, turn your paper upside down, yeah, and then work towards yourself. I can't do it that way. I have to paint away from myself. So bearing all that in mind, let's go back to some of these little trees. I'll show you again when it comes to the bigger ones because you won't see many of these little ones, but there probably would be a few. So I'm just gonna attach a branch to there. And then it might just sort of, it won't appear much at all. And um, let's have one here as well. And they would sort of cross over one another. Let's do one at the bottom. You might have to go over that again. So you just get little hints of branches. You know, they don't always necessarily need to attach to the to the trunk because it could start a bit where there's foliage, so it might just appear here. So you don't need to go mad with these at the back. But I think you need some.
So you need to do all your little ones here and maybe in the backgrounds here. And as I'm not even looking at this anymore, you know, it doesn't bear any resemblance. It just gave us an idea. And so I'm going to carry on and do all my little um, trees and then I will get back to you. Right, I've done a bit more of the little ones. and You can see I've done lots of little branches and things. But I'm going to do the ones that are sort of midway. They're not background. They're not these foreground ones. They're, they're a bit like that one, really. They're sort of in the middle. And you're just going to use the dark colour for that. Um, this is this one. So mine's sort of dried up a little bit while I've been uh, working. So I'm just going to put a little bit more water in there. And then you do exactly the same. But I will just do one with you. So I'll start at the bottom. And then I'm going round. You might not be able to see the yellow bits of uh, bits of sponging I did there, but they are there. And then I'm sort of they're getting a little bit more sort of detailed now. I'm working around the little shapes. Now you don't put lines down here. Okay, you, you think about this is foliage crossing over the trunk. Like that. So these are just going to be the solid dark colour that you've made. These foreground ones are going to do slightly differently because they'll just have a little bit more detail on them. too many little you know bits here then you can you know you can go over them if you think oh there's too many leaves there then you know just go over some of them that's fine once you've got the hang of it you'll, you'll understand this but at the beginning it's, it's just a little bit strange but it's a really quite a nice way of of getting a, a tree you know a nice tree effect Fairly simply. I'll cover that bit in there. Yeah, I'll keep sort of stepping back and having a look. It's got a bit of a funny shape now. I think if that carried on there, that would be there. The edge of it. It's got to make sense. So it's just gone, it's just hidden beneath the canopy and then it just reappears. I can see I'm going to have to make, I wish I'd not done those pencil lines now. That's why sometimes, as I say, it's better just to do it rather than put the pencil lines in. So I'll probably rub those out because that's too wide. I can see, I can see that. That would go up there and then it would reappear. Yeah. that's too solid I don't like that then just put up the odd little dot in it as long as it's within where the trunk would be you wouldn't put it here you know it's got to think well the trunk would be underneath so you can put a little dot there which breaks up a big clump I'm 
Okay, so whether you want to sort of do all of those and then do your little uh, branches off or whether you want to do, you know, one at a time and finish them off, then that's, I'm going to leave that to you. But your tiny little twiddly branches, you'll probably keep adding those later. But you can get maybe your main ones in. But anything branching off from that, you can probably do later on. You wouldn't have them opposite. That's another thing about trees. They're sort of more staggered. You wouldn't have that opposite there. That would just look like two arms. So, you know, you would stagger them here, 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 all the way down. Um, so I might have one not actually touching the tree, but it looks like there's a bit of foliage going over that. And I'll do the rest with my little rigger brush. Don't worry about the bottoms of these yet. We're going to deal with those. I've started to do a little bit here and sort of just soften them. That's later. They're all little twiddly bits that we do later. Now you notice this is darker. That's a little bit lighter. They're a lot lighter. So try and get that progression if you can. You know, you can always do three. You know, if you can find another little container, you could do very light, middle and dark. Um, you know, I'm going to leave that with you. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of those that are sort of on that plane, but I'm not going to do this one and this one because they're the ones in the foreground and they're slightly different. So I've done a bit more. There's quite a lot of twiddly bits that I need to do, but I just wanted to do these two trees here so you could see the difference. I mean, they're just done in solid colour. Uh, but this time... I want to do something slightly different. So I'm going to be using some of my yellowy colour and I'm going to be using some of the very dark colour. Um, so let's start with this one. With the with the yellow, either yellow or the honey, I think probably the honey colour, I'm going to just wet, I'm going to put a little bit of that on once again, you know, going in and out of little bits of sponging, but only do a bit like that because that has to stay wet. And then immediately with your very thick black, and it really does need to be black, decide where you want your light coming from. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to have it coming from here. So then on this side, you will put some dark. And because you've done it, you know, it's wet underneath. I might just keep that solid there. It'll run into that. And then with a damp brush, you, you know, you can sort of just tease it in a little bit. You can even use a little bit of, I'm just wondering whether light red might be nicer. I don't know. Um, maybe we'll do that on that one. Or you could pop a little bit of, you know, the ready colour in as well. We'll do a bit of both. Okay. And then you've got your, your dark colour. So you only want a little bit of um it to be like a light side, a bit of a highlight there. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more uh, wiggly. I don't want it to be too straight either. So you've got a bit of a light side. So let's do that again. So do a little bit more. You can do a little bit of um, the main trunks, uh, or the main branches, sorry, going off, but don't, uh, don't do a lot. We can finish that later. So I might go over that bit there and work in and out of these little orange bits. Don't let it dry before you immediately, in fact, actually, what do we say? We said we put a little bit of red on as well. Maybe put a little bit of the, the light red in. So you've got a bit of both. And then immediately go in and put on your dark. Now, if this is not thick enough, when it dries, it'll all be wishy-washy. So do make sure that um, that your colour, this, this dark colour, is really thick like single cream. Like that. 
And if the light's coming from this way, the underneath of that little branch would be lighter. And the top bit would be darker. So I'll finish that off later and I'll take little bits off here. Okay. And then do a little bit more. Just do a little bit at a time. Maybe a little bit of the light red. And then with your dark. Pop that in. Now do that as far as you, you can going up. Eventually, let's put a little bit of that in there. Um, eventually you might just have to keep it you know darker. Um, as it gets smaller, it might just end up being like these, going from that to just dark. But let's just see how it goes. I'll carry on with that. A little bit in there, a little bit in here. See, it's complicated in this bit here. I can't really put the, the light colour on. I'm just carrying on with the dark. That's what I was trying to explain. Because there's such a lot going on. It would just be dark but then there's a bit up here where I can I can go back and get the light side on as well Wanted a branch going off that side, say from here, it's like an orangey colour. We'll make the branch orangey to start off with. And then you can put your dark on one side. Now you can see I'm going across a lot now because this is a tree that's in the foreground. So it will go over some things that you've already put in the background. Remember, this is, you know, you've got to think about what's in front and what's middle and what's back. So some of your branches can go over the top of these other trees now. I'll let that dry and then I'll do a little bit more work on that one afterwards. So just leaning slightly, but it's fine. Trees are not always straight, are they? And then you would do this one in exactly the same way. So this one has a bit more detail in it. In other words, you've got a little bit of light on the side and it's got more detail. It does have to be the darkest. You know, it still needs to be a, a nice dark edge here. If, as I say, if your colour's not thick enough, then you'll find that it'll, it'll be quite pale and then it won't look right as far as tonal perspective is concerned if these middle ones are darker than that one it'll throw it out so you've got to make sure that this is the darkest one with the most detail on and then they slowly get lighter so I'm going to go and do that one and then I'll come back so I've got the main trees in I haven't got all the little branches yet but it's always nice if you've got a mount to sort of you know start to have a look at what it's looking like really you know you can decide whether you want it lower down or higher up or you know, it's uh, it's always nice to keep doing that. So now I'm going to do all the the main branches coming off the trees and do any twiddly bits that I think I need. For example, that's rather a big clump of foliage, so I'm going to break that up. You know, I mentioned earlier about you can put... I might just go over that again. You know, you can break up clumps like that. I think that's probably the only one, maybe one in here like that and then I'm going to start the main trunks uh, the branches sorry so I will just put some I'll start them so don't forget to thicken them up a little bit as they meet the trunk 
and then they will go thinner. And as you get to the point where you think you can't get any finer with this particular brush, that's when you leave it and then we'll go, oh, sorry, wobble, uh, and we'll go back and we'll use the rigger on that afterwards. I've done that there. And like I mentioned earlier, if you've got a branch coming off a bit that is orange, then make your branch the same colour to start with. And then on this side, and then eventually it will just go back to being black again. And then I will, I will leave that and I will use my rigger on the rest of that later. And don't forget, this tree is in front of that one, so this would cross over that one. That's fine. You know, that's what will make the picture look authentic now. And so on. So I'm just going to spend some time doing the branches and then I will show you how to add a little bit more colour where you think you need to and then we'll just do the bottom. Right, okay. Well, I'm just going to show you how to just put a few more little bits of colour on. I've started it here. Say, for example, that bit there, it's just gone a little bit sort of pale. Uh, then there's nothing stopping you with a bit of a similar colour, almost like in dots or squiggles you can add, with a little brush, you can add a little bit more. So you're not using a sponge now, you're just using a small brush, just to add a little bit. It's gone a bit pale there, so there's nothing stopping us just making those a little bit darker, a bit more defined, a bit more detail. that. I'll carry on with that in a minute, but I will just tell you the next bit as well. And that's to do the floor. This is very sort of blunt the way it just ends like that. That doesn't look very realistic. I've started to put a little bit more detail into, into e these areas here. So with your biggest brush here, you can just wet. Let's just do a bit at a time. Let's just wet a little bit around this tree here. And then I'm going to go back to a small brush and with a little bit of that very dark colour again. The light's coming from here, so the shadow would be coming over on this side. Like that. And then you can put in some other bits of colours as well. We can even sponge this again if we want to. Let's just, let's just do this first of all. I think we'll probably need to put a little bit of sponging over that to make it look like fallen leaves. You can do that around the base of most of your trees. So around here, if I just wet, maybe use a smaller brush this time.
common now with your honey colour or you know your lime green or whatever just put a little bit of sponging on the work that you've just done um, it will just make it look like leaves or you know some sort of foliage you can obviously use your red as well but be, be careful with that because that's just very very strong I'm going to cut off this um, bottom bit you'll see in a sec and then we just put a mount over that and have a look and see what it's looking like I thought I would cut off this bottom bit I think I prefer I prefer the top bit I think just little dots like we did at the top here Just little dots of colour. This will just add a bit of texture. I left it a little bit off here. Remember I told you that you could actually lift things out to give it a bit more of a misty feel. So the way you would do that, say I did a little bit around here, just with clear water and a tissue. You can even take off little bits of the trunks in the background to make them look like they really are very much in the distance and maybe sort of a little bit of a mist um, coming through there. So this is why using non-staining colours is it's quite nice because you know you wouldn't have been able to do this if you'd used staining colours so if you think oh I've overdone that you know then there's nothing stopping us from actually just lifting some of the colour off you know I could even lift a little bit off here say almost like a little bit of a path which is leading through here and a bit of dapple sunlight sort of coming through the trees so I've done a bit of sponging but now I'm just lifting lifting some of the colour off And, um, you know, I mentioned that you could, if you know you wanted to put like a, another colour leaf on there, I think, oh, it's too dark, I wish I'd got a bit more yellow across here, then, you know, you can just take out very carefully and then with some yellow or whatever colour you want, you can put that back in. So I always sort of say to my students, you know, no fiddling, don't fiddle. Because it's when you fiddle and you think, oh, I'll just do that, that you'll ruin it. But now I'm going to give you permission to fiddle. So you can put more leaves on, you can put more branches in, you can lift little bits off. Um, until you get it the way you want. So I will leave you with that and let's see what it ends up like. So there you have it. Uh, I'll just show you what I finished off with here. I just put some more bits across the trees in slightly darker colours, just with a little brush. I've taken out some of the colour here to give you a bit of a misty feel. Added a few little bits down here and just put a few more branches in. But that's pretty much um, finished, I would say. So that's just a reasonably quick and easy way to 
to do trees. Um, I know it's, it's a bugbear for a lot of people. So if you've got anything from this and you've enjoyed this, uh, I don't mind if you share it. Uh, in fact, the more the merrier. Uh, at this difficult time, it's good to stay creative. Thanks for watching.